trauma bonds we got close off of battle scars equal pain so we think it's equal game same team but it's different hearts same goals but it's different shots thought we was winning the same turns out you were just running me game should have known but i couldn't guess it it's a damn shame what's going on everybody welcome back to another episode of hoop mcs joined by hassan and my co-host nasim what's going on buddy what's up hassan how are you this week pretty good man doing well um today it's we're going to be talking about kind of something that hit the nba uh community pretty hard uh it's been about uh not about but it's been the one year anniversary of uh kobe bryant's tragic death um he um died in a helicopter crash him along with his daughter um on january 26 2020 and um i guess first thing i want to ask uh is what were you what do you remember doing during the time that the news was announced if you do remember yeah i I remember exactly where i was uh i mean i i don't know if you were there but we were out paintballing and as soon as Mm -hmm. we get off the course uh your brother actually he he screams out he's like what the hell kobe died and obviously none of us believed it because like it was Kobe Bryant, none of us actually thought okay. it was real. So uh, we were like, nah, dude, you're just bullshitting. And then we all like kind of run to our phones and we, I just see like ESPN notifications, CNN, Twitter, all just breaking news. And I was like, holy crap. Like I didn't, I didn't actually think it was real. And uh, long behold, it was unfortunately. Yeah. I, um, what's it called? I wasn't there when y'all were paintballing. Cause I do remember what I was doing. Um, I was at a coffee shop and I was doing something like for uh, for school and uh, I think I remember seeing the notification on my phone and I, I remember I was just like shocked I was like in disbelief I'm like no way like this has to be a hoax yeah. and um, I think uh, it was it was at an outdoor like shopping center and so like as I started, walking around i think i may have seen the tv with the headline like kobe bryant um tragically was involved in a helicopter crash and i think that's kind of where it hit me hard like that's when it actually struck me like oh my god this is reality yeah like just when i i didn't like it didn't strike me until i went on on twitter and you know what was just saying it, everyone else is saying it, and i was like damn and the the whole thing was confusing because there was like so many conflicting reports about who was in the helicopter and who wasn't and yeah. so and then unfortunately we like we found out his daughter Gigi was with him which was just very heartbreaking to hear at the time it's still very yeah hard. yeah that was another thing um in terms of if his family members were involved who was it um but man I don't know uh I was never personally a fan of Kobe Bryant, the basketball player, but, or no, let me rephrase that. I was never a fan of Kobe Bryant, the Los Angeles Laker, but I definitely admired, like, his talent. Like, he was the GOAT to me growing up, just because I started watching basketball, and I'm sure you can probably relate to this, but we came in kind of late. Like, I started watching in 04, um, my favorite player at the time was T-Mac. And uh, as a Rockets fan, I remember like when we would face uh, the Lakers and then just, I'm like, oh my God, like Kobe Bryant's going to drop 50 on us. I know it easily. And then like, like I, I despised the guy. I despised my team playing against him because I knew he was just going to kill us. Yeah. To me, he was the GOAT. Like, and... You know, I'm not trying to get into a who's the GOAT debate. I'm just saying, like, in my eyes, like, he was somebody that you would fear. I'm not literally saying he was the greatest basketball player I've ever witnessed. But to me, it was just like he, he like, struck fear into opponent in, into fans' uh, minds, if that makes sense. Yeah, and that just speaks volumes about the type of player he was. I mean, the guy had what like 31 other fan bases hating him just because he was just that good he killed your team that's literally what it was yeah i don't think it was ever a genuine hate by the way it was just 
like just yeah he was just greatness no. you know so um i came in as an nba fan like i guess towards the back end of his career not the back end but like i don't know when the rockets I played think, them when the rockets played them in the playoffs you you were probably watching the nba around the same time that your older brother was watching it just because it naturally rubbed on like yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah and so. i just seeing my older brother like always get you know like dejected yeah. from kobe bryant killing us just made me like have the same energy you know so exactly and but towards yeah. the end of his career that's when like i genuinely started to appreciate him and i feel like that's what i'm doing with lebron not to get off topic but like whenever you see them start going you know towards the end of their career you start appreciating them more yeah for me, it was, it's kind of like the opposite with uh, LeBron James. Yeah, I know but, you're just uh, a hater, but we'll talk yeah, about that next time. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Um, but no, with uh, but on a serious note, though, um, I don't know what was your like most like what was the what was what's your like most um, memorable like memory I guess of Kobe Bryant's career. Uh. Honestly, it'd probably be his his last game. I know that's kind of cliche, but I just remember I remember everything about that day. I finished school, and then me and my brothers we went to the very last Rockets game, where we ended up beating the Kings and making the playoffs, forty one and forty one. Uh, and then we rushed to V Dubs because we hated our insides, and uh, we wanted to watch the last um, the last Kobe game. And on at yeah. the same time, that's when the Warriors were going seventy three and nine. And right. literally, just nobody cared about the Warriors like completing the record. Everyone was just focused in on Kobe, and everyone in the restaurant, like even the waiters, nobody was moving in the in the final two minutes. Like nobody was getting food, eating, or serving or anything. <laughs> everyone was just watching Kobe, and Kobe hits sixty, and the guy that's like, he's our waiter. He's just sitting by us. He starts getting hype. He's like, "Let's go!" And we start dapping each other up. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a, it this was honestly a, very fun. As in beat ups. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can imagine that was probably like a legendary moment, yeah. just because given the atmosphere. Um, I actually remember that moment, and I think a lot of people probably default to that just because that was literally his last um, moment as a basketball player. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have like an an exactly like the most memorable moment. Like I remember being. In certain places, hearing certain things like the eighty-one point game, I remember where I was when I heard that. Um, where were you? Because uh, I was like two, so I don't remember. I think I think I was in, at the Houston Rodeo, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, I remember hearing that news, and I'm like, "What? Eighty-one? And um, another moment. Th- there were just so many moments. I remember just regular season games um, where he just torched us. And then in the playoffs, when we actually played them in the Yao Ming era, um, that was a year that the Lakers ended up winning the championship as well. But he killed us. And um, yeah, uh, he, he did begin to start looking a little bit more human towards the tail end of his career. And I think that's probably the reason why a lot of people start appreciating people more. Um, it could be very much the same reason with LeBron James for you, just because like, we, we see him rely less on his athleticism and then you see him do like all these other things that he just still excels at and it makes you admire the guy yeah um, like you saw but, Kobe's like leadership completely take off towards the end of his career you know like he wasn't that he wasn't that uh asshole that everyone portrayed him to be during his time like they did with him yeah you know he he settled in like he kind of accepted the fact that he's just gonna have to lead these guys whoever he's with and then just go from there yeah, he became. He kind of took on that mentorship role. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think honestly, those last couple of years watching Kobe Bryant were pretty fun for everybody in the NBA. Truthfully, just because you kind of, you kind of start to see like, okay, his team sucks, and you feel bad for the guy because he's still putting up like thirty or forty or whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, even before James Harden was putting on those like 30, 40 point streaks. Like Kobe Bryant was the guy to do that. I remember, um, if I think it was like during oh six oh seven, if he may have won the MVP during that year, or came close. But I remember he had that hot streak going for himself. Like, yeah, like J- James Harden. A lot of people, and I don't know if a lot of people said this, but 
I may have heard this um, comparison, but like he's kind of like the modern day Kobe Bryant in terms of like the numbers being scored. Yeah, every every single time I hear a points record being broken, like whether it's thirty point streak or averaging a certain amount of points, other than Will Chamberlain, uh, like Kobe was always up there just because of how great and gifted offensively he was. He was literally a killer on offense. Yeah, man, I I remember yesterday. Um, so part of my goals is to complete reading a, um, this book that I'm reading uh, by the end of the month. And so like I was looking at other books in terms of helping me to stay like motivated and to get inspired. And I started looking into uh, <laughs> Mamba Mentality, his book. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so uh, I haven't made the decision yet to purchase it, but we'll see. It, um, I, but, I, yeah. I saw the same book. And I was actually contemplating the same thing. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a reader, so I can't really say anything. But Well, he, one thing that I read about the reviews. So I wanted to see, honestly, like an honest review. If, um, if like, what it was uh, critiqued at before his death. Because, obviously, when, co- when somebody like that dies, sales are going to go through the roof. Just because, like, it's, you know, like a memoir of, a, of somebody of that magnitude. Yeah. But um, what I... What I heard in a review was it almost was not very wordy at all. It it was like a bunch of pictures that kind of show you like events through his life from the beginning of his rookie year to the very end, to the very end. Yeah, and so, he had that um, he had that that short film as well. Does that kind of like tie in to the book at all, or is that completely separate? When did he have a short film? Didn't he win like an Oscar or something? Oh, that's right. I I don't know if he um included that or not, but um yeah, I, I'm not I'm not honestly too sure about that. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I just that guy was literally the guy. I, like he just he was a rapper in the beginning of his career, and then he won an Oscar <laughs> at the end of his career. Like he, <laughs> I don't I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what's up with these like basketball players trying to be rappers nowadays? I. I I'm so, no, I don't know what that wave is at the moment. I mean, I don't know if that's actually a stereotype or not, but like Damian Lillard, um, somebody with the Houston Rockets, Dan Wellhouse. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I mean, those are the only two that come to my mind. So I'm not. I'm not entirely too sure if there are other instances. I mean, it's okay to pick up a hobby, I guess. But you know, you yeah. don't have to. You don't have to force it on the public. Like Lonzo That's Ball, true. I remember he his thing was. Oh awful. yeah, heard... uh, the the little rap feud between him and um, what's it, what's that? Kyle Kuzma. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what that was about. Yeah, um, well, let's let's catch up a little bit with the NBA. Move on to um, yeah. a little bit more of a brighter note, if you will. But before yeah. I do, you know, um, just rest in peace, Kobe Bryant and Gigi. Um, Kobe Bryant was an icon. He changed the game forever, and uh, he'll truly be missed, uh, missed by all NBA fans around the world. Yeah, um, thank you for everything yeah. that you've done for the game, and uh, you know, I, my condolences to the, to the family, honestly, and the families yeah. of the others who who lost their lives. Likewise, um, but uh, yesterday, so uh, we spoke about LeBron James. We mentioned him earlier. He had himself quite a performance. He kind of went off on his former team. I don't know if you uh, caught the highlights on that one or not. Yeah, I, I couldn't miss it. I mean, everyone was talking about it. I, uh, but <laughs> what was it? Like a heckler sparked him up at the end of the third, and then he just destroyed them in the fourth. I think I was watching the highlights, and it looked like he scored like 18 out of 20 points in a row or something. Um, so I don't know exactly what were like what was that narrative, but I remember watching the highlights. Um, it was close in the fourth. But every time they kind of like got close, LeBron would just make. He went like seven for eleven from three, yeah. Um, and I think he had forty six points in total. But uh, like he was just phenomenal, dude. Like on defense and offense. Um, I don't remember exactly the stat line in terms of like what Anthony Davis had, but I'm sure it was nothing compared to LeBron James. Yeah, he scored under twenty. I don't know if you saw, but he 20? came out with a quote saying like, "I suck." That's what he said. Oh really? Yeah, so I didn't know that. He acknowledged that he's playing like dog water right now. <laughs> uh, well, that would be that would be good uh, for uh, Christian Wood 
to probably, I mean, he's not going to get in, and Anthony Davis is not going to get in, but um, I think he could probably squeeze in uh, another as an all-star center this year over Rudy Gobert. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, is that it in the West? Like, is that all the big no, men? So, so you got Jokic, he's going to oh, make it, yeah, yeah. Anthony Davis, and last year was Rudy Gobert. I don't know what the format is in terms of who they allow, like how many centers, yeah. but if you know, if it's kind of been three, the rule of thumb over the past th- three years, I would imagine like Jokic and Anthony Davis are for sure going to be in. And then you could probably, you know, depending on who's like, I don't know if Zion Williamson, is he considered a center? I don't know. I, I honestly yeah. don't even know what position that guy plays. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, like, I don't know his position. I don't know if he would constitute like in that category of players who would get who would qualify like an all-star spot yeah i hope not um just because of the fact that i feel like christian wood is probably still having himself a better year than uh zion williamson uh but yeah we'll see i don't know i honestly i don't even know if they're gonna do like the full i don't even know if they're doing like the full all-star game isn't it just voting in like you don't actually Uh, play anything like well, all, all I know about the All-Star game is that I think something came out today or yesterday about, like, they want to do an All-Star event in, is it Atlanta in March? I think it was supposed to be Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know anything about the format. I don't know if it's, like, you know, we vote in the top five. I think last year they voted and the top two guys from East and West picked teams. Or I, I don't exactly remember. They changed the format so many times that I just stopped caring last year's Truthfully. format was pretty interesting I, but uh i don't like that it ended on a free throw yeah but no i did like the all-star game format it, it did definitely become way more competitive and yeah. like we got to see players play defense and stuff yeah. um but yeah i think the uh the free th- it, it did suck to see uh i think it was anthony davis who yeah right? he, missed, he missed the he, first one and made the, he second missed the first one. one yeah exactly and i i um, remember like before the format like when the first format was released i had no idea what it was saying like i know it was a tribute to kobe but i could not yeah. understand for the life of me what the format was but when they played it out it made more sense and it was actually very very interesting to watch yeah yeah um yeah they um what's it called they like they definitely what's it called did a bunch of things for kobe bryant like tributes to kobe bryant last year terms of oh sorry in terms of teams like wearing 24 and 8 and all that stuff um but yeah yeah i mean he's he's a legend and an icon on the game i i don't know if i'm sure they'll maybe like make a trophy after him or something yeah they they they, they did the all-star mvp after him didn't they oh did they that sounds about right i think so yeah yeah um the nba mvp it's what is it who's it named after the M- the MVP. I was about to say Larry O'Brien. I actually don't. That, that's the championship, yeah. isn't it? Larry yeah, O'Brien. It yeah. Who's Larry O'Brien? I've never heard of the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know who he is. <laughs> I don't even. Time out, man. I'm pretty sure other people wonder this too. I'm gonna look this up <laughs> before we before we end this uh, episode. Yeah, if you guys He's a politician. In- what? We had the fi- the finals trophy named after a politician. Pause, man. Let me see something, Larry. Because the Bill is, it, is the Finals MVP Bill Russell. That that sounds right. Yeah. I don't know. Let me see. Uh, the name of the trophy uh, was Walter A. Brown Trophy until 1984. And okay, so oh, it was changed in honor of former NBA Commissioner Larry O'Brien. Who served from seventy five to eighty four? So makes, he died. I am assuming so. So that makes more sense. Yeah, I was about to, No, he's a com. He. This is the same guy. He was an American politician and basketball commissioner. Yeah, you're allowed to be a politician and a commissioner, dude. <laughs> Hold on, when did he die? Come on. I'm assuming he died in nineteen ninety. Also, his name. So, time out, man. Like, I, I would get, like, naming the trophy if the dude, like, died from a tragic death or something like that. Or if he changed the game. You know, it doesn't have but, to be a tragic death. Let me just put it out there. 
Yeah, probably not. But like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, I do disagree with the fact that it was while he was commissioner, and what was that like four years into his time, or something? Say that again. Wasn't it like four years into his stint of being a commissioner they renamed it? So this guy just uh, like took over and said, "All right, we're naming it after so me now." He was commissioner from seventy five to eighty four, and then I think they changed it right after, like I think nineteen eighty four, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, so when he stepped down, I'm assuming. I yeah, that, I believe I read that. Yeah, before. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, the name of the trophy was the Walter A. Brown Trophy until 1984. Well, I guess it was he was a great commissioner. I don't know. Yeah, they should change it, man. Like, who cares about this guy? I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's I don't know. <laughs> let's go uh, ahead and wrap it up from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> um, uh, thank you guys for watching and supporting. We do appreciate it. Make sure to catch us on Spotify or Apple Podcast. And if you like watching um, videos over audio, you can find us also on YouTube as well. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms, um, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we're always posting content there, always posting little snippets. Um, so we definitely do appreciate you guys tuning in week in, week out. And until next episode, peace. Thanks, guys. Later. Trauma bonds. Got close off about of scores. Equal pay, so we think it's equal game. Same team, but it's different hearts. Same goals, but it's different shots. Thought we was winning the same. Turns out you were just running me game. Should have known, but I couldn't guess it. It's a damn shame.